Praise the Lord. Well, we have Krista. Krista is going to minister to us this morning, and she's going to bring a, a refreshing word. How many remember the last time she ministered? And so she has a message she'd like to share with us. So Krista, come on up. And Well, good morning, Northway Bible Church. How are you all doing this morning? Good. Uh, my name's Krista. Like he said, for those of you who may not know or may be new, um, I'm so um, just excited and grateful to be here this morning. I'm grateful for a church like Northway that allows its members to exercise their, um, their gifts. And I'm just so grateful to be welcomed up here this morning. So I know I always start like that, but I, I feel it's important um, because Northway is just so special to my heart. So yeah, praise, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, we're going to get started here, and I just, I want to jump into the word first, and you guys, please bear with me, because I have a few verses that I want to run through first, um, because heaven and earth will pass away, as the Lord says, but his word remains, so I want to read through a few, um, just verses from the Bible, and you all don't have to turn to all of these, um, if you just want to write the location, and then, yeah, we can get started with that. All right, so let's start with, we're going to start with Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Exodus, um, the second one will be Exodus chapter 34, verse 6. Yahweh is a compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger and rich in faithful love to a thousand generations, forgiving wrongdoing, rebellion, and sin, but he will not leave the guilty unpunished and bringing the consciousness, the consequences of the father's wrongdoing on the children and grandchildren to the third and fourth generation. Third one will be John chapter three, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. The fourth one is John 14, verse 6. I'm going to go there. John 14, verse 6. Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And the fifth one, I would like for us all to go there. It is 1 Corinthians 13, chapter um, 13, verse 13. Corinthians. Chapter 13, verse 13. Now these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. I'm going to go one more place, but if you all can stay right there, we'll be right back to that. Revelation is the last one. Chapter 22, verse 12 through 13. Look, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to repay each person according to what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last the beginning and the end. Pastor, would you pray for us before we begin? Lord, Father, we thank you for your wonderful word and your powerful word. Lord, let it speak to our hearts today and let it enter into our hearts. You see the hearts that are here and what they need to hear and receive. Let that truth have its way in each of our lives. Bless Krista as she opens her mouth. Speak through her, Father God, and we will receive in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay, I want to um, camp out a little bit on 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Many of us know this as the love passage. Um, so let's start with verse 4. We'll read that really quick. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy, is not boastful, is not conceited, does not act improperly, is not selfish, is not provoked, and does not keep a record of wrongs. Love finds no joy in unrighteousness, but rejoices in the truth. 
It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. And like it says in verse 13, now these three remain faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. And that is so true. And I feel that it's important for us to remember that love, Jesus tells us, love is the greatest of these, especially in these times where we have people where, where we may not agree with them, but it's important to act out in love. And... Um, and you know what? I have to say, the Lord cares about the details so much. Can we all agree that he, he, just, he just does? He, he cares about every little thing. He cares about our day-to-day, -day, daily lives. And that's just the way he loves. Love is one of the most complex, sometimes misused word in the human language. Because we can say, well, we love God. We love God our Father. But we can also say, um, I love pizza. Or we can say to a significant other, I love you, and then look down and be like, I love my shoes though. You know, it, it's, it's such a broad concept. But we as Christians know that love is a being, love is God. And by growing closer to him, we grow closer to just understanding love, his love, and exuding that same love to others. Um, so I'm going to before I get um, too much more into this, I want to share just a little bit more about details. Um, because, like I said, the Lord, sometimes I take comfort in reading the Bible, in like Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers, because you guys know how there's like so many little details, and he just like orders so specifically, and is just like so to the T. Like, if we go to Exodus, I'm going to show Exodus chapter 12. This is the Passover verse. So Exodus chapter 12, verse 6. The Lord says, You are to keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole as assembly of the community of Israel will slaughter the animals at twilight. They must take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses where they eat them. They are to eat the meat that night they should eat it roasted over the fire along with the unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or cooked in boiling water, but only roasted over fire. Its head as well as its legs and inner organs. Do not let any of it remain until morning. You must burn up any of it that does not remain before morning. Here's how you must eat it. You must be dressed for travel, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. You are to eat it in a hurry. It is the Lord's Passover. You see, like, it is so specific and so detailed the way that the Lord instructed the Israelites. The Israelites are God's people and they were enslaved in Egypt and God brought them out. I'm sure many of us know. Um, but just the way that he so detailed brought them out and so specifically, he cares about details so much. And personally, I'm like that. I think I'm like that because I'm a girl or maybe I'm like that because I get it from my heavenly father. Um, let me give you an example. So Let's say, let's say um, Aaron and I, we have a, a meal prep thing that we do, like a little business. So if he, if I were to go up to him and say something like, oh, I saw one of our meal prep clients at the store. He said our, our meals were good. His response would be something along, along the lines of, oh, cool, that's awesome. And then we kind of just move along. I find that I can get away with like not as much information with him, but if the roles were reversed, it would be a completely different conversation. If he were to come up to me and say, oh, I saw one of our meal prep clients at the store. He said our meals were good. My response would be something more the, along the lines of, oh, that's awesome. Who was it? What grocery store were you at? Um, who approached who first? Like, did you ask him if he thought our meals were good or did he just say that our meals were good? Because we all know that it's not a real compliment unless he says it first and you have to ask him that it's not, it's not a real thing. Just tell me everything that happened, um, starting with who approached who first, ready, go. And that's just how I am, because the details matter so much. You know, it, the details make a difference. And in the same way, God cares not just about the big things that we do, not just about the careers we step into or the, the significant other that we marry, but even the little things, the details, even in that. And um, also, apparently, about the details in this message, um, 
I don't think I've had less time to prepare for a word than this week, but I'm so grateful for it because God is so, so good, and he's taught me so many things through that. I remember, um, I believe it was Tuesday morning, I was just sitting, reading, having my quiet time with the Lord, and then I just, I, I guess people prepare for messages in different ways, but for me, the Lord shares visions of me g- giving a word and to a specific audience. So I had one of these on Tuesday, and it was, it was incredible. It was just, I felt the Holy Spirit was there in that room. And so I text pastor and asked for, you know, an opportunity to speak. And uh, I mean, I have a few trips planned, and th- there's not always availability. So I expected to speak sometime in August. But then I asked, uh, just like the time that we agreed on in August, I was going to be out. So I asked if he had anything sooner. And then he said this weekend. So I said, praise God, awesome. And one thing that is really cool is that as I was preparing for this word, he had already imparted to me what was going to be done that morning. But it was so neat because as we went throughout the week, I started seeing that message come to life from like conversations that I would have with my mom. And I only told this to you once. I said, whoa, that's crazy. I'm I'm going to speak on that. Like, that's something that I feel like the Lord gave me. And little things like that, um, that were just leading up to it. In fact, to go back on the topic of love, let's, let's turn to um, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 again. And I want us to read. So it's a given that love is a very complex, intricate, it's a, it's a being, it's an emotion, it's an action, it's a feeling, it's, it's all of the above. Love is God and God is telling us what love is and how we can step in that love and walk in it. Love is not just one thing. It is not just patient. Love is not just kind. It is not just selfless. It is all of these things combined. And one thing that God has been teaching me is this last part, this uh, verse 7. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. That part, love believes all things, In other words, that's love giving the other person the benefit of the doubt. So it's one person coming in um, to maybe a conversation that they don't agree with and giving that other person the benefit of the doubt in love. And there's one person that does this so well. My parents do this to us because, you know, we're their children. But there's one person that does this and it, it blows my mind. I've learned so much and I don't think I've ever said this but um, I've learned this from my sister, Gia. She just has this this sense of love where if if I love you, I'm on your side, no matter what. There have been countless times where I will come home and maybe it's because I've gotten into like um, a creative discussion with another person and I already know, there's no doubt about it, she is going to be on my side. In fact, she's gonna take it a step further and threaten to like unfollow them on Instagram or like find where they live for some reason or something like that. You know, she's just that type of person that regardless, it doesn't matter what I do, it's that type of like unlogical, irrational, just reckless love that she has towards me. I'm never in doubt that she is going to be on my side. I've never said this to you, but like I, God has taught me a lot about this. There are so many times after we come into like a conversation or one of those situations we actually that happened this week it was on Tuesday that one of those things happened and I'm just like scratching my brain because I, I don't have that instinctive kind of love I'm more logical like for example um, there have been several times where I pick up my brother from school he gets in the car and maybe he's a little disturbed about something that happened in his day and my mind automatically goes to well what did you do you know like where I, yes, this is what happened to you, this is what the person said, but what did you do to make this happen? And so, like, I have to prove that he is innocent until I am, you know, supportive of him, until, like, he has my love and affection, um, whereas my sister is the complete opposite. It's, I love you, okay, what happened? 
and that is that's incredible like yes love is so many different things love is that love believes all things hopes all things bears all things but love is also that it's like the luke 15 love where let's turn there it's it's such a cool such a cool passage luke chapter 15 many of you remember this is about the prodigal son Luke chapter 15. Okay, so there is a man who has his estate and one of his sons, one of his sons asks for his inheritance in advance. Let's find that. Mm. It's 11 and 12. Starting 11, yes. Okay, so verse 11. He also said, a man had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, father, give me the share of the estate I have coming to me. So he distributed the estates to them. Not many days later, the younger son gathered together all he had and traveled to a distant country where he squandered his estate in foolish living. So let's, let's just talk about that right there. So we have the younger of the son coming up to the father and saying, I want my share. It, it's very similar to one of my siblings or I going up to my parents and saying, when you all pass away, when you die, you all leave certain things. Like you have like the house, you have the cars, you have um, you know, whatever you have in the savings, and it will be divided equally into the three of us if something would, were to happen to you. It's the equivalent of one of us saying, when that happens, I'm going to get a third of that. I want my third of that right now. Like, I want my share right now. And yes, that's a little rude, to say the least, maybe, for someone to do right now. Back in that day, it was completely disrespectful. It was probably one of the worst things you can tell your parents. Like, hey, when you die, I'm going to have a, a third of that. Can I just do that now so I can go on my own and just like live my life with a third of everything you have? So back then, like, this was incredibly terrible for a child to do, as it would be now. Um, I've tried it on my parents. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, um, it was incredibly terrible. And then the guy, the younger son, said after he spent everything, he spent it all. He spent everything. A severe famine struck the country, and he had nothing. Then he went to work for one of the citizens of that country, who sent him into the fields to feed pigs. He no longer, he, no, he longed to eat his fill from the carob pods the pigs were eating, but no one would give him any. So he's like the lowest of the low right now. He spent it all. He can't go back to his family. He's, he's eating alongside the pigs. Actually, the pigs are eating better than him. He is in a really terrible place. And some might say, well, I mean, rightfully so. Like, this is what he asked for. But what's really fascinating about this is that after he's disrespected not only his father, but his family's name, and he gets what his actions deserve, one might say, he returns home. And it's the way in which he returns home that is the most fascinating thing. And this is the Father's love. This is the love that bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. When he is at the lowest state in his life, he's next to the pigs and he's seeing they're eating better. He, he gets up and he's like, I, I need to go home. Like, I, I need to go to my father and let's see, if, let's see what he does. There was a very high chance back in those days that the father would have disowned him. Actually, that is what would happen. If you would disrespect your parent to this extent, like right now in America, there's this, there's this notion that there's really not respect towards elders anymore or towards parents anymore, and it's very disheartening. But back in these days, this was extremely disrespectful. So he's walking back home. Let's go to verse 18. I'll get up, go to my father, and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired hands. So he's not even saying, welcome me back as your son. Like, just take me back as, as one of your servants. Like, I'll just, I'll work for, for my stay here. I'm sorry. 
But while the son was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. And this, this is the important part. He ran. He ran, threw his arms around his neck, and kissed him. So I want to paint this picture for us. This, product, this, this son is coming, and it says he's still a long way off. So picture, like, at least a few people between them. So he's a long way off. His father sees him coming, and he runs. This is not common back then for a man to have run. There's actually... Um, this thing where the, the bottom of a man's sandal wasn't to be seen back in that day. So if this man is running, if this father is running, then multiple people are, are seeing just like the bottom of this man's sandal. So it, it takes a lot for the father to, to go and run and hug his son and embrace him and welcome him back. And that's just what he does. He doesn't just welcome him back, but he's filled with compassion. He kisses his neck. And he kissed him, and the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and am in your sight. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father told his slaves to bring out the best robe and put a ring on his finger and his sandals. So, and this is just beautiful. The father gives him the benefit of the doubt, and he just loves him so well. He, he doesn't just say, okay, that's fine. You can come back. We'll, we'll work it out. He puts the best robe on him. He slaughters the best calf, and they have a feast. They have a party. And that, that is love. And it's easy to love when things are in our favor. Just like back in Exodus. I know I'm a little bit all over the Bible, but honestly, this is how my, my mind works. Um, last time I was here in January, and um, the ladies and I made a, a connection because we realized that we were all the same in the way that we think. We're, we're just like so rabbit trailed. We think all over the place, um, but we're not crazy. <laughs> we're not crazy. Amen. <laughs> okay, Exodus. Okay, so God has just brought the Israelites out of Egypt. And they're singing praises to him in, verse, in chapter 15. I will sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. He has thrown the horse and its rider into the sea. The Lord just brought the Israelites out of Egypt, and he crushed the Red Sea waters over the Egyptians who were coming after them. So they're praising. They're like, praise God. Like, this is awesome. God is highly exalted. He has become my salvation. This is my God. Um, I will praise him and my father's God. I will exalt him. He's a warrior. But it's easy to praise God when things are going good, when you see him working and all of that but and then the next chapter they're already cursing everything and saying like Moses why did you take us out of out of Egypt we were better fed there and now we're just going to die in this wilderness you know one thing that um that the Lord has been teaching me is to remember to stay fascinated with him as I'm reading through the Bible, I'm in the book of Numbers, and one might say there may not be very many things fascinating about the book of Numbers, but it's, it is, it truly is, and I don't know if you all remember maybe the first moment you experienced with the Lord when you first received him into your life, and it was just so fascinating. Um, I remember for me, it's was seven years ago this summer, actually, that I first received the Lord. And I've told this story before. But it was just incredible because it was nothing that I was used to and everything I wanted all in the same time. And I remember after that, every story, everything I learned about the Lord was just incredibly fascinating. Like, I would read a book like Numbers and be like, whoa, this is awesome. This is a continuation of Exodus, like the Israelites. They were complaining and bickering, and they're still complaining and bickering, and they're still lost, but God's still providing for them. He's still doing all of this. And it's easy to read through a book like that or just any book of the Bible and just kind of say, like, yes, I, I, it's expected of God to be like this or something like that. For example, um, I also failed to mention this last time I was up here, but um, I am... 
dating Northway's very own Erin Hirschman. <laughs> and um, it's been great. It's been incredibly fascinating. We've been dating since J July 30th of last year. So the 30th of this year will be a full year. And it's j we're in that fascinating, fascinated state where we're just so taken aback by one another. And I've heard from other people like, oh, that'll die down. <laughs> I've heard it a lot, so I don't know. Maybe it will. Maybe it won't. <laughs> Some of the couples are like... <laughs> um, yes, in the name of Jesus. Yes, amen. I receive that. And But you know what? I also am encouraged because I see other couples who have been together for years. And congratulations on the um, Navaretes for 22 years there in the back. 22 years of marriage that's incredible but I hear many couples in their like 40th 30th year and they're like it's it's still great like there's going to be ups and downs but it's still amazing and the Lord's been reminding me that he has created our earthly relationships with one another to reflect our relationship with him because we are his bride and he loves us and cares for us and it's in the details, in the little ways that Aaron cares for me, that I see that reflection in the Bible. It, it's, it's so incredible how like just the, the way that our relationship is and how he cares for like even the littlest things, I see that now while reading the Bible. Um, for example, so we recently went on a trip and I can be very picky with the foods that I eat because like I look up ingredients and I just, I don't just, want to eat a lot of greasy food or I'm a little picky I know the Bible says do not worry about what you will eat or drink and I don't worry about it I just look into it I, I'm just aware of it that's it um, well he knows how I am and so we, we took a trip with his family and he was so kind he made us like four of us he made his parents drive us to this like shop this healthy shop where I could get some snacks so that he knew that I was fed and well taken care of and then, like, when we would go out to eat, I'm sorry, I'm not just bragging on Aaron. Like, this is, this is a reflection of the Lord's love for us. Like, the Lord cares for us like this, but even more. The Lord's love for us is better than any love that we will ever find on this earth. He is greater. He loves us so, so much. I'm just talking about the little ways that Aaron loves me. So, he took us to this shop, and, and, we, and I bought, like, all of this, like, healthy food, and then whenever we'd go to restaurants, before he would look for the, look at like items for himself, he would make sure that I had something to order. So like he would be like, okay, what are you, what are you gonna have though? And um, he just make, made sure that I was taken care of. And in the same way, the Lord does that to us. And I'm sure you all who, um, who are married, you, you see this as well, but God's love is just so good. He loves us so much and he always makes a way he always makes a way. But I also want to say that it's, it's up to us. He's given us a choice. Like, yes, his love is never ending for us. It is overflowing. It is overwhelming. But there's still a choice on our part to choose him each day, each and every day. Just like in the beginning, he gave Adam and Eve a choice. He didn't just make them robots to love God because he very well could have done that. But it's not love unless you make that choice to love the Lord. And just like that, we're faced every day with a choice to love him, to choose him. And with that, I want to bring us back to Exodus 34, verse 6. It is 34. We read this in the beginning. Then the Lord passed in front of him and proclaimed, Yahweh, Yahweh is a compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger and rich in faithful love and truth, maintaining faithful love to a thousand generations 
forgiving wrongdoing, rebellion, and sin, but he will not leave the guilty unpunished, bringing the consequences of the father's wrongdoings on the children and grandchildren to the third and fourth generation. So God, he is a gracious and loving God, just as he looked out for the Israelites as they were in the wilderness for so many years. It's so it's almost comical to look back on the book of Exodus and see how many times the Israelites doubted the Lord after he saw, after they saw the Lord perform so many things. Actually, this Israelite generation in the book of Exodus saw more works of God than any other generation. Not only did they see how the Lord brought them out of Egypt, but they also witnessed his daily provisions. They, they received daily bread from him. There was, he, the Lord provided quail for them to eat and bread each day, and yet they still doubted. But I just want to encourage um, just everyone today that the Lord cares about the details in our lives. He cares about us every day in our day-to-day -day actions, not just the big things. Um, so I would just encourage that if anyone here maybe doesn't know the Lord or has grown a little distant, that we would all just acknowledge him this morning and receive him. So this message is not a very lengthy one, but it's one where I want us to reflect and, and grow fascinated with the Lord. Like read through, if you've read through the Bible, I would encourage you to read through again with just childlike eyes, becoming fascinated with all that God is and growing closer to him with each page and each chapter. <clears throat> because he cares about the details. And I want to give another a, example really quick. <clears throat> So I was passing through the garage the other day. Oh, well, first let me preface by saying, so even though ladies, like we are very um, alert to the details and we care about the details a lot, men also care about the details. The Lord has taught me that as well. Because I was passing through the garage the other day, my dad's already grinning. I was passing through the garage the other day and my dad stopped me and said like, hey, look what I did to the navigator. And so I go over and he opens the back, the back door, like to the back seat. And he's like, you see? And I was like, what? I didn't, I didn't, nothing looked different to me. So he was like, you see that little button right there on the console? It was broken, so I replaced it. And I was like, well, that's great. He's like, yeah, it was, it was broken. It's been broken. Oh man, it took me such a long time. I had to like take apart the whole console and then just put it all together piece by piece, but it's better. It's, it's, it's there now. He could tell I wasn't very, I wasn't following. Because personally, I think my siblings could agree too. Like, I didn't notice that it was broken. Apparently, it had bro been broken for a long time. I, in my mind, like, I wouldn't have been able to tell you if it was broken, if it was there, or it was a piece from another car. But my dad, he cares about cars. I've said this before. He has an affinity for vehicles. So he cares about them. And because he cares, details are important to him. And so because he, he noticed that I wasn't really sharing the same enthusiasm for him as this little piece on a car it, that I honestly didn't even notice. And I'm the one that sits in the back seat. Like, we sit in the back seat. We don't, maybe, maybe they've noticed it. But he could tell that I wasn't um, sharing this enthusiasm. So he was like, yeah, I just, I care about those details. You know, it just, it bugs me when it's not, when it's not precise. And after that, I walked away and I thought, Guys do pay attention to details, but to things they care about, you know? If it's something that they don't care about, then they, then it's like, it's not a big deal. Um, but the Lord, because he cares so deeply for us, even the little things to him matter. Like, any little thing. Driving to work, if, if, you're, if your mind isn't in the right place, ask him, like, Lord, please calm my thoughts this morning. I know you care about every little detail. You care about the little things. That's not to say for us to get worked up about 
little things that maybe don't go our way because all things work together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. But our Father loves us and cares about us more than we can fathom. That's the main point today. He loves us, cares for us, and wants to be there in our everyday lives. And it's so beautiful. So with that, I want us to go back to John chapter 14, verse 6. John chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So things were a little different back in the days of the book of Exodus, back with the Israelites. Um, the last verse I read, it said that, it said, the guilty will not go unpunished, bringing the consequences of the Father's and wrongdoing on their children and their grandchildren to the third and fourth generation. Thank the Lord that now we have Jesus who has paid for our sins and forgiven us if we would ask. Jesus was the sacrifice that allowed us to have that relationship with, with the Father. And he says that he is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. So I would just, I want us all to pray right now, if we can stand. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Lord, we acknowledge you today. We thank you for your love for us and for just caring for our for us and our lives and even the details, even the things that we may overlook. And it's just, it's just a testament of how loved we are. We are so loved by you, Father. So I pray that right now, um, if anyone in this room is struggling maybe with their identity or who they are, I pray for your Holy Spirit. I pray for your Holy Spirit to just come on each and every one of us and that you would transform us, Father into knowing the person that we need to be, to knowing you, Father God. I pray for your love, for your love on us, Father, that we can just greatly reflect your love and be good stewards of it in this earth, Lord. We are your hands and your feet, Father. So I pray that the Holy Spirit, you enter us, and um, that we just live for you, Lord. Um, right now, I want to continue in prayer and just, and just give anyone the opportunity if anyone would need prayer or, um, or just rededication. So, Liz, would you? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you for the way that you've made each and every one of us different. And you've called each and every one of us to live for you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. You know, I heard that it, the praise and worship didn't start too well this morning. We didn't get off on maybe the best foot. But how many of us know that it's not the way we start, it's the way that we end? It's the way we go out. Um, God is good. He's faithful to the end. He's faithful. He's faithful. He's the Alpha and the Omega. The Lord says, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I just want to praise him today and if anyone 
if anyone has something to just praise him for, I just, let's just all praise him right now. He is worthy of our praise. He is good. He is loving. He is worthy of our praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for being in a, with us. Thank you, Father. And on the topic of the Lord caring about not just the things that we think are big in our lives, if there are some things that you feel might be details that maybe you haven't given much thought to pray towards them or pray about them because, you know, there are bigger things that we need to be praying about. Maybe you have that mentality. Then I would encourage you, pray right now. Lift up those requests to him because he is good, he is faithful. He says, you have not because you ask not. Ask and you shall receive. Knock, the door will be open. Seek and you will find. Lord, I pray that you seek. We seek you diligently and hear you, Father. And if anyone would like to come up, we will pray with you. But just take this time. Thank you, Jesus. So I just want to pray really quick. Um, Lord, I just thank you so much for, for all of us here. We are so grateful for you, Lord, that you would love us, that just like the Israelites, they were so, one may look at them and say they're undeserving of your grace and mercy. And in the same way, we can look at ourselves and say, Lord, we are so undeserving of your love for us, your mercies that are made new every morning, Lord. And I thank you that we can walk with you each day and talk to you like a friend. Father, that's what you are to us. You are a friend. I pray that you continue to just allow us to walk with you and grow closer with you. I pray a blessing over this congregation, Father, a blessing of your Holy Spirit that Holy Spirit would grow closer to each and every one of us, Father God. Thank you for this congregation. I pray that we all be good stewards of your love, being transformed by the renewing of our mind each day, learning more about you, drawing closer to you, Father God, because this life is you. Thank you, Jesus. So in this, we love you, Father. We praise you. And it's in Jesus, Jesus' name we pray. Amen.